This is episode 195 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today we're talking baiting suit. I'm going to share my journey in becoming confident in my baiting suit. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show. I'm Stephanie Dozier, clinical nutritionist and emotional eating expert, creator of the Going to Beyond the Food Method and founder of the Going to Beyond the Food Academy. Corporate executive turned health expert with my own journey with weight, body image, and food. It's now my mission to help smart, successful women like you live confidently right now and unconditionally. Ready, sister? Let's do this. Hello, sisters. Yeah, we've released the episode earlier than normal. Ah, that's the benefit of being subscribed. You're getting it on Tuesday, July the 2nd. And why are we doing this? Because July the 4th is obviously a long weekend and 70% of our listener are in the U.S., but also because we're talking about baiting suit confidence. And July the 4th is what? It's a celebration. It's family. It's water, beach, the lake, the barbecue. And for most human being in the U.S. on the 4th, it means baiting suit. And I've had a really tough road in my life with confidence in my baiting suit, which I now own, but I'm hearing almost every week in my different program, the struggle that some of you that haven't done, quote, the work yet are experiencing with weekends like July the 4th. And I've heard, and this is about six months ago, one of our students in the academy said that it's been 20 years, 20 years that she had wore a bathing suit and she raised two children. So her children had never saw her in a bathing suit because she wasn't allowing herself to wear a bathing suit. Crazy, right? Now, I'm going to take this topic and instead of just telling you what to do, this is another episode of She's Beyond the Food. So it's my journey of owning my confidence in my bathing suit. So it's going to get really interesting. Now, just a quick note to say that July is not only July the 4th, for you guys, but it's also anniversary month for us here at Beyond the Food. It's eight years that we are in business. Crazy. Eight years ago at this time, I was literally building my clinic from ground up, literally from a cement floor and cement wall. They were putting drywall right now. I was getting my marketing plan on And I was opening my door at the beginning of September to the public. So today, not today, but July is that eight years celebration. So to thank you, our community member, we're going to host two special events. It's actually two special gifts for you, one on July the 10th and one on July the 24th. And these offer these gifts are going to go to our community member and what I call community is people on our email list because that's the way virtually that we host the community right otherwise I would all bring you to my house right now but virtually that's the way so if you are on our email list watch for a big celebration number one email July the 10th and again on the 24th and these are going to be gifts and offers that you'll never see again. We've never done them and we will never do them again because they're too special and drastic for us to repeat them any other time. So be sure to be on our list and watch your email. So are you ready to kick ass in your bathing suit this weekend? Let's do this. Now, a little bit of background on me and my journey in a bathing suit. Water is something that I've always loved my entire life. I was a fish in water when I was young. I have picture of me at literally two years old, jumping off the deck into a pool with no swim aids and just loving it. And I grew up to be a competitive swimmer and I was taller, bigger than most kids, but I never really cared because I love the water, love the activity until that one moment that... 
at about the age of 10 years old, I don't have the exact age, but around that time, one of my uncle made a comment on my body, particularly around the size of my breasts. And that moment forward, I've had confidence issue in my bathing suit. Actually, a couple months later, dropped off of competitive swimming. Not sure if it's a direct cause of that, but coincidentally, I dropped off. And since that day forward, I've always had, I don't want to say a problem, but a real issue putting on a bathing suit to the point where in my 30s, and I'll share that with you, I avoided anything to do with water. It just got worse and worse and worse and worse. Now, many of you are like, how does she know that, right? How does she know that that's the moment? Well, that's the the work, right? Is when you go beyond the food and you do the framework that we teach, that I've put myself through, that I now teach, you start putting the pieces together as to why you're not confident, example, in the bathing suit. Because you're born confident, like I shared at the beginning with myself, and then something happens along the way to rob you from this confidence, Your job in the work is to identify that moment to prove to yourself that you had it and then working, doing the work to regain it. That's the work, right? It's actually a name that was coined by Katie Byron. And I'm just repeating it because I think it's the best expression of what Regaining our confidence in the bathing suit, going beyond the food, making peace with food in our body truly is. So here's my first lesson that I learned in this journey. You don't need to earn the right to wearing a bathing suit. You have it. Up to the age of 38, I thought I didn't deserve it. And even with the multiple times that I lost weight and I would put a bathing suit after losing a whole bunch of weight, I still think I deserved it. I still was ashamed of my body because then I had too much loose skin. There was too much wiggle happening. Can you hear me? (laughs) Right? So I would regain the weight. And then the reason would be I'm too fat to wear a bathing suit. Nobody wants to see this body. Who's thought that before about their own body? When I really, really, really had to wear a bathing suit, I wore a t-shirt on top of my bathing suit. Now, looking back at those pictures, because I do have some picture of me wearing a t-shirt on top of my bathing suit, like I was standing out in the crowd, like everybody was in the bathing suit, except me who wore a t-shirt on top of it, thinking in my head that that would prevent people from seeing my true body. More on that in the next lesson. But I made the situation even worse because more people were actually looking at me in my t-shirt than actually just wearing my dang bathing suit. And then I met the work, like going beyond the food and making peace with my body. And the whole science of the brain and how literally our brain looks for evidence to validate our core belief. My core belief is I didn't earn the right to wear a bathing suit. So everywhere that I go, I just saw that, right? And then I got introduced to body diversity. And here's what happened. Body diversity being like seeing different body particularly on social media, I started to see all these bigger women wearing bathing suits. And I was a big woman. I'm like, wow, they're so courageous. Good for them. But not for me. Not for me because I'm different than them. I'm uglier than them. I have more cellulite than them. I have more roles than them. Good for them. I'm really supporting them. But no, I'm still not good enough for me. That lasted another year until I continued into the work. And then I realized that my brain was just creating excuses to stay in my comfort zone of not wearing a bathing suit. And then I realized I just had to face my fear because for me, I wanted to live a full life and living a full life meant going to water, going to the beach and wearing a bathing suit and stop stopping my life 
or not participating in my own life because of the bathing suit. So one of the things that I learned and that we teach now is that when we are about to leave our comfort zone, KKA wearing a bathing suit, we have fear that come up and then we feel scared and we think, oh, I'm scared. It must not be something I have to do. And then we retrieve back to our comfort zone thinking, well, I'm afraid. That means I don't need to do it. Where it's the complete opposite. When you feel the fear, you first ask yourself, is my life really in danger? In the case of the bathing suit, the answer is no. Then I just have to do it. And then I did it. And nothing happened. Meaning that I started to wear a bathing suit and going to places and just living my life. And nothing happened. Nobody judged me. Nobody screamed at me. Nobody pointed finger at me. Nobody did nothing. And I was enjoying my life. And then lesson number two came up, which is wearing a bathing suit is practicality. And that's body neutrality that taught me that. Like wearing a bathing suit is just something you have to do if you want to go in the water. It's not a statement about who you are. It meant nothing about me as a person. It just meant that I wanted to go in the water. I had to wear a bathing suit. Just like, I don't know, if you're a car mechanic, you wear an overall so you don't stain your clothes with oil. It's just the practicality of your job. That was a huge moment for me. And at the same time, I realized that the reason why I was seeing wearing a bathing suit as a statement of my own person is because that's what society was teaching me, right? That's what diet culture taught me. Like we all hear the beach body, the everybody, or getting a bikini body. Usually that comes around April, right? And I realized that I had like in my head that culture put in that you have to earn it. And because you haven't worked hard enough, you're not thin enough, lean enough, toned enough, then you don't have the right to wear it. But then I shift that in the body neutrality model to like, it's just a practicality. And here's another thing, another big lesson. That's number three. I can't fool anyone. People see me. They saw my body in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. They know I'm big. They know I am not a size two. They see my roll underneath my shirt. So is it a surprise to them when I put on a bathing suit and the same rolls are there? And the same thick ties are there? No. Why would it be different? And that's the whole story around the t-shirt thing. And that just dawned on me. I'm like, I'm wearing a t-shirt on top of my bathing suit. Nobody else does that except me. I'm drawing even more attention on my body. And honestly, I'm a fool. Like, do people think really once I put on a bathing suit, I'm going to, they expect me to be a thin, thin person? No. And honestly, that's when I realized it kicked, if, People think that way, which they don't, but if they do, they can choose to look other places. Like there's three other direction, north, south, east, west, like I'm here, just look somewhere else. Like if you are thinking I'm supposed to be tinned when I put a bathing suit, look somewhere else. So lesson four, as I'm getting comfortable in wearing a bathing suit, one thing that really became clear you have to get the right bathing suit. Critical. And the right one for your body type makes all the difference. That you decide to wear a one piece, a two piece, it's irrelevant. Now I'm gonna talk to the plus size ladies here that have big girls. You have to get support. One of the biggest mistakes that I did in the beginning is I bought my bathing suit at Target or Walmart or like the cheap store, cheap being a qualificative, no offense to anyone, but you know, I didn't want to pay a lot of money for my bathing suit. So I ended up buying the non-supportive type of bathing suit that are made for the thinner person that don't have as much need for support. 
Now, I'm not going to get too descriptive, but you know what I'm saying here. When I finally accepted that I needed to pay more for my bathing suit, and I did, which by the way, the best bathing suit ever are from Iloquai in the US. Oh my God. I felt like a different woman in my bathing suit. I literally felt physically supported, emotionally supported. I felt amazing in this bathing suit. And things didn't wiggle and I didn't have to like body check myself and check my position to make sure everything stayed where it should stay. So that's a big one. Get the proper bathing suit. And if you have big girls, proper support. And here's lesson five. Once I got the bathing suit, I practice around the house. So I know this sound a little weird, but it helped me a ton. I put on my bathing suit and I walked around the house with my bathing suit doing my thing, doing the dishes, cooking, watching Netflix, the TV. I stayed in my bathing suit so I could get comfortable in my bathing suit on my own prior to going out in public. A ton. That helped a ton. So do it. If you're new to this, you want to do it. Do it by yourself, especially if you have kids. Wait till everybody's out of the house. Do it. And then do it in your family setting before going out to full-on public, which is lesson six, is pick your environment in your first couple times. By that, I mean, be very mindful who you're going to live this experience with. Be sure that it's people that are going to support you people that love you, and people that will not create an environment that will make you even more uncomfortable. So for an example, if you have perhaps girlfriend who are still on the diet bandwagon and seeking thinness and constantly checking their own body and constantly commenting on their own body, and you live this experience beside them, you're likely going to have a very challenging experience because you will constantly do the same to you. So try to do that in a very supportive environment. For me, I did it on my own. I went on a trip in Florida by myself and I practiced around the house. Then I went to the pool and to the beach on my own. And I got comfortable with myself first before I actually put myself in an environment of family and friend. That was my choice. It could be totally different for you. Tip number seven, invest in a good cover-up. A girl need a safety net. And the cover-up is that safety net. Because perhaps you'll be out this weekend, maybe at the lake, and then you're doing your experiment, you've got a good comfortable bathing suit, you practice around the house, and then you're rolling with it and life is good, you're finally enjoying the lake and all of a sudden you hear a comment of someone about their own body and all of a sudden you become conscious of your own. You need that safety net, that good cover up that's going to help you ride the wave of that feeling. And then once it's passed, you can remove the cover up and go on about your life. So invest in a good cover up. And the last lesson in this beautiful journey of body confidence, I had to remember why I was doing this. And I would encourage you to do the same. For me, my number one motivator was my work, my journey through the work of going beyond the food, of body neutrality, of facing my fear of growth, of personal self-development, of embodying what I was teaching to others. At that time, I wasn't teaching it, but what I wanted to teach to others, I needed to embody first. I know for a lot of moms, if you're a mom listening to this, you have kids you want to change their journey, their trajectory towards body confidence, perhaps even around diet culture. So you becoming confident in your own bathing suit will teach a lot to your children. So remember your motivating factor, whatever it is, it's always bigger than yourself. 
And that's where the whole fear comfort zone comes in. If you are not making your why, your intention bigger than yourself, you will stay in your comfort zone forever. So in our world, in the academy, we teach something called desired feeling, right? We teach about moving away from physical goal to a feeling, a dream, a life we want to be in and how we want to enjoy life. So hang yourself on those feelings, anchor yourself on your vision, and that will help you get through the first couple times of wearing your bathing suit in public and being completely comfortable. Bottom line is this, it was extremely difficult. It was challenging. I was anxious. I was afraid, but I did it. The only way through finding my confidence in my bathing suits was through the emotion that I was fearing the most. And when you're in it, the tornado may seem big, but it's not as big as it truly was made up in your mind. Once you're through that tunnel, which it's only a tunnel, you're going to come out at the other end. And you, you're not going to die from wearing a bathing suit in public, let's face it. So you're going to come out of this alive and better and at a different level in your own journey. At the end, it's your choice, just like it was my choice. I chose for close to, well, from the age of 10 to, let's say, 39, for close to 29 years, I made the choice to say no to those activities, to enjoy, to feel uncomfortable in the bathing suit. I chose the no. So if you're there right now, it's your choice right? Because you can totally go out and be confident in your bathing suit, but you choose not to. Nobody imposes it to you. Nobody imposed it to me. I made the choice at 39 or so to say no more. And then I took the approach that I just shared with you and I just did it. So it's your choice on wherever you're going to take this podcast from and what you're going to do from it. So what did you learn from this podcast? That you can do it. I hope that's what you learned. That was my intention behind sharing with this. Now, I'm gonna, I want to close this podcast with a quote that I recently saw on Instagram from an account called Beauty Redefined. If you follow me on Instagram, I share a lot of their quote in my stories. So if you're not following them, you should. But Lindsay Kites the owner of Beauty Redefined, who did her entire PhD on body image, said this, we don't hate our bodies because they don't look good enough, but because we've learned that looks is all that matters. Take that for a bit. Sit on that. You don't need to earn <laughs> your bathing suit you have it within you. You just got to get past that mental block. So if you're ready to start your journey with us at the Beyond the Food community, join our community email, which by the way, is going to be the place where we're going to share our anniversary offer for the month of July. So you can simply go to stephaniedoze.com slash community. And next episode, 196, we're going to talk about intuitive voice. You hear me talk a lot about intuitive eating and tapping into our body wisdom to know what to eat, when to eat, and how much to eat, but that same wisdom can guide you well beyond food. And our guest, Kelly Covert, is going to talk to us about how to tap into this and how to use it in our day-to-day -day life. I love you, sister. Have a great July 4th weekend, and I'll see you on the next show.